with the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series starting in about an hour. I'm going to tell you guys my thoughts on the Daytona Duels that happened last night. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to another episode of In the NASCAR. So I really was, I really, um, in my Daytona for 500 predictions video, I thought I was going to be doing like a Speed Weeks race review where I did, where I, where I summarize all of Speed Weeks in general, like the Daytona, like the Daytona Duels, Trucks, Xfinity, Arca, and Cup, and all that video. But that's gonna take forever, and I don't want to do that. So I decided to make a separate video featuring the Duels, and I'll. I'll congratulate the winners in my Daytona 500 race review from the Trucks, Xfinity, and Arca. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started with this race review for the for the duels last night. So let's start with duel number one. Now Kyle Larson, he was on the pole because yeah, he is he is the pole sitter for the Daytona 500. Um, he was leading the pack through throughout the for, for, for throughout the first half of this race, and yeah. Then pit, then then when pit stops happened, uh, the Fords basically had the best organ, were, were were the organized, were the best organized group out of everybody. Um, Ryan Blaney, he led the field out of the, led the Fords out of the pits, and it was between Blaney, Keselowski, Cindric, and Briscoe. Um, yeah, there were bump drafting, um, single file racing, not the kind of racing I would like to see out of Super Speedway, and yeah. The blue and yeah, and the duels in general, both of them were not really that entertaining. So yeah, I'll summarize that. Um, so due to it, due to this kind of being a, um, I might I might grade this race like on a scale, just like I did at the um, Bushlight Clash of the Coliseum. But I I may I may not do that, but I'll see what happens. But I'll see I'll think about it when I when I'm continuing to make this video. So yeah. Um, so, back to the race. Um, Brad Kozlowski, Blaney, Briscoe, and Cindric, they were all racing single file. Um, so yeah, um, they were just racing a single file. Not really much until the final four laps where Kozlowski made a move on Blaney that sent Blaney back to like fourth or su or third or second. And then Kozlowski led until the... And then Kozlowski led the rest of the final laps. And Cindric made a move on his teammate Blaney. And coming out of turn four, Keslowski basically had 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 the had the car, had the clean air, all the second, third, fourth, Blaney, Briscoe, and Cindric were all racing. Three wide coming out of turn four and into the trioval. Like basically kinda of like a photo finish for second, third, and fourth. That led Keslowski plenty of room and he was able to get the job done and get his first win as a driver owner. So that's pretty cool for him, even though I really I'm not I'm not really a Brad Keselowski fan. I never liked Brad. I'm but I never really I never really liked Keselowski at all. Um not uh, ever since I started being anyway, being a hardcore NASCAR fan, I've never liked Brad Keselowski and he's probably my second least he's probably my second driver I don't like besides Joey Logano, but can hey, I don't I don't severely hate him as much as, as Logano, so congrats to Keselowski. He earned it. He had the best car. He was one. Of, he had not. I don't, I'm not sure if he had the best car, but he was one of my picks to win that Daytona 500. And hopefully, he gets the job done and gets his first win. So, yeah, first win of the driver owner for Kislowski. Good job for him. Duel two. Alex Bowman led the way. Um, it was not quite like duel duel one where Kyle Larson basically led all the laps. It was battle between the Toyotas and the Chevys, a few Fords in the mix there as well. And Denny Hamlin, yeah, I'm always my favorite driver. Um, he basically did not like the aggressiveness going on in the front. He basically said, I do not like the energy at all. He does not like the energy that's happening on the racetrack. He said it over the radio. Fox FS1 played the radio of that. I actually heard that on when I was listening to my listening to my scanner on my phone. So, yeah. Um, 
So yeah, so after that, Hamlin was stuck in like 14th or something like that, and Greg Biffle, so yeah, Greg Biffle, he was out there, had a chance, had a really, really good chance, like he was a ninth, basically a top, one of the top drive, drivers in the top 10, and I'm surprised he's doing really good coming back in his, coming back in, in their cup series after like, what, five years of being out of the cup car, that is, in, that is amazing, oh, I forgot to mention this, Kaz Grala made an incredible move to make it into make it into the Daytona 500. Stank is he was with the lead draft. Um, JJ Yaley, I think it was him. He, he and McLeod basically had no help. They didn't have good cars. Um, the leaders passed them. That was then after that. Um, JJ Yaley was on the same lap as Kaz Grala. Grala passed him, and that's how Kaz Grala was able to win into the 500. Which I really wanted Cass Grawley and Greg Biffle because those were the two guys I really want. And hey, I got my wish. So thumbs up for that. Um, so yeah, Greg Biffle and Cass Grawley will Rick will be in the Dip 500. Yes, I really wanted to wet, wet them in the 500, and I wanted that. Awesome, thumbs up for me. So yeah. So back to Duel Two. Um, after the racing before the pit stops, and first off, a Toyota's come to pit road, and Danny Hamlin. <sighs> Over aggressively gets on the pit road and yeah, spins himself out. So good thing it's only the dual race, it's not the actual 500. But hey, at least Hamlin will be towards us, will be towards the back of the field. And when I say that, because remember what happened last season, where where Christopher Bell got in Almiral got collected Bowman in a big wreck. If that happens at the front, Hamlin probably won't even be at the front of the field anyway. So. He's probably going to run in the back and basically charge his way up to the front like he usually does at super speedways. So that that's a pretty great strategy for him. Um, great strategy for my favorite driver. But after that, the Toyotas basically just lost it. If it wasn't probably for Denny Hamlin's spin, to a Toyotas would probably would have had a shot out there. And yeah, and Denny Hamlin uh, spun out, which pain. Um, I really hope this won't be. I really hope those past two events of the, the um, clash at the Coliseum, where he basically had mechanical failure and that spin up her road. I hope that I hope that isn't a sign of the probably one of Denny's worst worst um, seasons. Because I'm a Hamlin fan, I really don't want that to happen. And so, after the pit road incident, we had the Chevys and the Fords come to pit road, and just like in Duel One. The Fords had the best organization, had the best, had the best group out of all the manufacturers, um, led by Logano, um, Busher, Harrison Burton. Oh, hold on. Oh, Michael McDowell as well. They were the top four Fords that were out front, just like what happened in Duel Number One. Kevin Harvick was behind this as well. Then we had Kyle Busch, Bell, Bubba, and Truex. They were the Toyotas. The Chevys were towards the back of the field. Hamlin was like a lap down, one of the first lap down cars, along with Bowman, I think. Maybe Bowman, yes. I think Bowman was a lap down too. But yeah, and then after that, it really wasn't nothing much except for my for um, the driver I can't stand, and he won the um, Bush Clash a couple weeks ago, Joey Logano. He um, he was leading on the last lap, and then Chris Buescher made a move to the bottom, and Joey Logano being doing one of the Joey Logano things he does, makes a bad block and ends up wrecking himself. <laughs> I'm glad he honestly wrecked. I'm glad he wrecked because because if Joey Logano won, <laughs> tell me I would not, I would really won't be, won't be happy, but at, again, just like the, just like the Bush Clash, at least it's not a points race. Well, I think it is, but Logano ended up wrecking, which thank goodness he did, and <sighs> Many and I, and when Chris Busher celebrated, I heard a bunch of boos from the stands, which I don't know why that was not even Bush. That was not even Busher's fault. That was clearly on Logano, so I just wanted to get that get that point made. The point is Logano, there's a part shortage going on with the next gen, and obviously some drivers don't even care about that. So, which completely sucks, honestly. It's just my opinion, but. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I really don't. I really don't expect drive a lot of drivers to be aggressive in the 500. I really, I really hope it's not going to be like 2013, where it's going to be a choo-choo train, period. Because I real, I really don't want that to happen. So, I'm okay with there being some wrecks, but 
<laughs> I'm, I mean, but Joey, honestly, I don't want drivers being too aggressive and just ended up, you know. So, I mean, I really like to see some action in the 500. I just don't want to see a lot of drivers getting, you know, having parts. I don't want to have, I don't want to see drop teams getting parts shortages out. If they do get up, caught up in the wreck, I'll be, I'll be, I feel bad for them because, feel bad for them because, um, part George is going to be a thing, so, yeah, but, Joey Logano, probably not, because, I like, just, like I said, I don't like Logano at all, but, <laughs> glad he wrecked, and, hopefully he won't win the 500, but my picks for Kozlowski, just like in the predictions video I made a couple days ago, my picks for the 500 are Brad Kozlowski and Danny Hamlin, and yes, Chris Buescher, RFK Racing, swept the duels. That hasn't happened like since 2015, where the same or the same NASCAR team swept the duels, which is pretty cool. Um, I really, I really, I'm not sure who swept the duels in 2015. I really don't know. If you guys know, tell me down below. But wow, and yeah, just does these duels really nothing have anything exciting except for except for the finish for in duel two where Logano wrecked, which yeah. And like I said, I want to see some action in the Daytona 500, but I don't want to. But if drivers wreck and having and there's still like some and there is a part shortage with the next gen car, I honestly feel bad for for the guys because they're trying to fix up their car and head out to the West Coast. But again, you have to be aggressive to win the 500. But again, if they wreck, uh, it's gonna be a little bit hard. It's gonna be a challenge for them for them to get the car ready for the for the West Coast win. So. Just want to get that out of the way. I want to see action. I want to see a good, entertaining Daytona 500, not a 25, not a 2013 or a 2021 Daytona 500. No, please, I do not want another one of those. So, yeah, but but the, I'm gonna rank the dual races probably the probably give it a three. That's gonna be my um rate for this race just because it wasn't really that entertaining it was just boring in general so yeah nothing really exciting happened except for the final laps so yeah i just want to get that out of the way um so what do you guys think of the dual races let me know in the comments below and anyways guys get ready for the truck series race tonight this is preston signing off i'm excited for tonight's truck race